What's up, go get us? Y'all, my name is Bernard Pearson. I'm the founder and owner of 1440. We're a time management company. We go into uh, establishments and look at how individuals have used their time to uh, develop their businesses. So I'm here with Mr. Martise Lewis, my guy, here What's at up? Chop Shop Barbershop in Teaneck. This first series is gonna be about um, ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Those people are from Teaneck. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time with Mr. Martise Lewis and uh, learn a little bit about you know how he came to be where he's at now do a little backstory on him and then we'll get into uh, some of the details about his business. So, what up my guy? It's good. <laughs> Everything's good? Yeah, yes, sir. So, um, we'll have a little dialogue with Tease. You know, so first question is, uh, who is Martise Lewis? How do you describe yourself? Uh, I'm just me, yo. <laughs> Y'all know, Tease, man. Just chilling, you know. Same old shame, man. It's hustle and flow. That's what it is. Okay. Cutting, you know. Get into the business, man. Just trying to get paid with keep the family fat, man. What's your um your hobbies? My hobbies are cutting. That's one of the hobbies. Um music, you know. I got a lot of hobbies, man. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's stay with the cutting. We'll jump really quickly into um what do you enjoy the most? Um, I, I would say cutting, man, because yeah. I mean, it's like, it's what I like to do, okay. and, and it's like, I love what I'm doing, I'm getting money off of it. Okay. So it's not a job, it's your hobby yeah, that's turned it's, into it's not a job. to your business. Yeah. Okay. When did you start cutting? How old was you when you started cutting? I was in seventh grade, yo. Wow. <laughs> seventh grade. So like 12, 13 started, years old. I was fucking niggas up. <laughs> <laughs> By ninth grade, I was mastered. I was okay. good, good to go. So how'd you learn how to cut? Um, one day, my barber kept, it's crazy, because <laughs> my barber kept just going from shop to shop. Um, always had a line. It was just like, damn, this shit is crazy, yo. Um, that was here in, in Teaneck or somewhere? In, he was in Englewood first. Okay. My man Harold, God bless the dead, yo. Okay. How he was at Brennan's Barbershop and then he came to Teaneck. He was at, um, I think it was Elegance over here. Okay. Um, it just, it was hard to get to him, man. He had a list and shit. He had to get on the list. Right. Harold. And, and, and I think he moved to Patterson or some, some shit where I couldn't get to. Okay. And I went to another barber who was my man. He hooked, he hooked me up, you know. Um, got a cut from a couple of different people, but it just wasn't how it be. And one day I found some clippers in my closet. Okay. This was my grandfather's clippers. Cut my shit, fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> then just started cutting my boys. Fucked that shit up a couple times. <laughs> my nigga Wilbur, God bless the dead. Larry that work with me now. Okay. My man Devin. Took my nigga Devin Cybers up here. Like Devin Fife? Yeah, some Devin, Devin Fife, Fife. nigga. My yeah. man Fife. Yeah. Okay. Took his Cybers crazy high. Um, and it was just someone from there, B. <laughs> I was popping. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's stay there for a minute. So let's talk about the progression of you jacking dudes' hairs up to where you are now. Yeah, so you see, what it, you see what it is now. Where'd you go from? You was cutting out of your hair, you was cutting their heads cutting, out, of, out of your out crib? Of, out, of the, out of that apartment, 34 State Street, 5F, which I still have that apartment over there. Okay. Um, Don't live there, but we still got the apartment. Okay. Um, I was cutting that. I actually moved to California and was cutting hair out there. My homegirl put me, she was like, yo, you need to get serious about this shit. Stacy Morris, um, she's popping like award winning hairstylists and shit like that. Okay. She sends me clients, but well, she can't come to New York. Um, I was cutting my father and his friends in the alley out okay. in California. Okay. And then. I just, that's how I was getting money, y'all. Right. That's how I was getting money, man. Okay. And came out here. How long you? How long were you in Cali? Two years. Okay. I graduated. I did 11th and 12th grade high school out there. But I used to go out there during the summers. Like, even when I was in elementary school and all that shit, my father lived out. My grandmother lived out there first. So I would go out there, chill uh, for the summer, and then come back, go to school here. So okay. was, Where was you born at? Were you born here? Harlem. You were born in Harlem? Yeah, yeah, Harlem. Came to Teaneck right from Harlem? Came to Teaneck in like, I think I was in like the fourth grade. Okay. 
went to the Eugene Field or some shit. Right. Yeah, Eugene yeah. Field. Yeah, Same yeah, yeah. and Eugene Field. Okay. Eugene Field now is like the border van. That shit was the turtle box <laughs> at one point. <laughs> But yeah, man. But that's crazy because everybody that went down there is right. popping now. That's right. Everybody's successful. That's right. We just needed yeah. something you know different. What I'm saying? It was a it different was way of learning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Learn it up, B. Okay. So you came back to Teaneck and started cutting at um, Corner Cuts. Okay. My man Dre Perry's shop. Um, his mother and father did a shop. His mother really did a shop for him. Friend mm -hmm. of God bless the dead. Did a shop for him. Um, Trey went to Edwin and he went to T-Net. Okay. And he was over there. Then I started working at my man Harry Scissorhands. Right, remember that. And I went back to Corner Cuts. Okay. They moved to Cut Creations. Then I went to Hours Hair Salon with Supreme and Roxanne. Okay. And me and my mom, my mom just came. Yeah, I was going to go work. Yeah, the crazy shit is I was going to go work for Lenny. Okay, and Lenny, Lenny the, the barber. barber. Yeah, he opened okay. a big ass shop in Harlem. He was like, "Yo, teach you coming through? You coming through? Nigga got me cars, putting them shits up, and everything." Right. Fritz and Nayama went over there, and I, my mother hit me. She was like, "Yo, nigga, you ain't gonna get no real job. You just need to open your own shop." Okay. You just need to do something. And I was like, "All right, mom." We did some shit. She so, how old was you when you opened your own shop? Ah, oh, that shit was ninety nine. It was in 99, I was like late 20s, y'all. And it was at this shop? No, we were on T-Neck Road. We okay. Open. On T-Neck Road. My mother was working for radio, VLS, so she was doing promotions and shit over there. Okay. So she was like, yo, we're going we gonna to open the shop. And I had to call Lenny, because I, I was leaving Dre's spot, and I was going to go with Lenny, and I was like, yo, he printed cars up and everything, had to hit the nigga up, like, yo, I can't go, B. Right. My mother hit me, like, she wanna open the shop. Lenny understood it. I told Dre, I was like, yo, Dre, my mom's wanna open the shop. Right. I'ma go down. We did it. My mother had, um, they were doing an uh, event at the Jacob Javits Center. Okay. And my mom was like, yo, let's let's do a shop at the Jacob Javits Center. I was like, what the hell? I had, had my man Atim do me like a backdrop and shit, my man Atim Turnbull. Did a backdrop for me. Okay. She set. We set up. We had a booth in the Jacob Javis Center. I think it was like um, Circle of Sisters or, yeah. or, or BLS. Or BLS used to host those events at the Jacob Javis. Yo, we had mad people getting haircuts. Yo, like <laughs> on the spot. On the spot, like a lot of women cutting their hair off. Wow. And then my mom was like, "Yo, we just gonna do a natural hair care spot." Okay. Did that. We popped off. We had like rough ends. Come do. Um, the grand opening, they signed autographs and all that shit. Right. We had food. On, on, so this is still on Teaneck Road? On Teaneck Road, yeah. Okay. And we popped off and it was go from there. Then we moved down here in 2002 on West um, Angwood Avenue. My landlord came to me and was like, yo, we got a spot opening around the corner. Right. I was like, yeah, but there's a barbershop over there. He was like, man, you could, you, don't worry about them. They do their own clients. Right. You could you should be growing out from your mother, you know what I'm saying? And it was hard working with the women, yo. Like we had separate rooms, but women are crazier than men. They talk crazier. <laughs> they talk crazier. In the barber shop. In, in the, the shop, shops. In the shops. In okay. The salon, B. Okay. And I was like, Mom, I'm gonna go around the corner. She was like, Cool. So your mom had the shop around the corner. Maybe like fifteen feet from here, around the corner. Basically, yeah. Okay. So what the same, all all connected. Okay. You left, you came here. Came here. Well, yeah, you came here. We opened up, we had the spot in 2003, we opened up in 2004. And my uncle had a clothing store right next door, we opened okay. up at the same time. Okay. <coughs> so you've been here for over 18 years? Yeah. That's, for, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. So you're here now. Let's go back to your backstory. What was it like working in other shops versus having your own shop now? Um, I like working in other shops. Cause I didn't have no overhead. <laughs> now that I'm a businessman, the overhead, and I understand why people did what they did and, right. and shit like that. Right. But um, I love working with everybody I work with, yo. I don't have no, no ill will for nobody. I still fuck with Pre, Roxanne, right. um, Harry, Dre, right. um, my moms. Right. Yeah, my mother. That's me. Our business. She still got a shop across the street. We had a business in Harlem. Okay. We just closed that during the pandemic. But we had that for like over 10 years, right on Lennox. Um, what was that business? It was a natural hair care salon. Okay. Yeah, it was okay. official, right on Lennox. It was called New Lock. 
Then your mother was running the shop yeah. there. And then when that shut down, she came here. Yeah, I mean, nah, we she, she still we had have shop. both. Yeah, okay. And we have the spot over on State Street. We actually closed and moved over here. My mother moved over here with the girls. Okay. <clears throat> um, we still got basically everybody that opened with us is still with us. Okay. So that says a lot. From from 1999. That everybody says a lot. That us. says a lot. So you must treat them fairly. Yeah, I mean, it's, we family, yo. Right. We knew each other forever. We still here, yo. Right. Al working with us. <clears throat> Al does our location work also. And who's, like, who's that? Al. Okay. Um, one of the girls that works for us. She actually opened her own shop, too. Okay. And she moved away when she came back. She okay. She back in the hood now, so she's like, we here. Okay. Let's bring it back together. I'm so she's back. been with you for how long? Yeah. Since, since the beginning? Yeah, since like 2000. Okay. Larry been with us since like 2000, my nigga Larry. Right. Um, <clears throat> Mike been with us since like, damn, 2000 something. That's the white dude with the tattoos. Everybody be scared of that guy, but I'm nice as hell. My man Ty was with us. He moved to Johnny's shop. He got his own shop now. Okay. Ty's original cuts on Cedar Lane, but they got Ah. Mm -hmm. He got Johnny's shop. You know, we are, everybody's still love, no? No no love lost for anybody, okay. man. So you touched on it a little bit, but you talked a little bit about how your mother was telling you to get a a job. Right. right go right, get right, a job. Right, right, right. You know, you ain't gonna make no money, go get a job, go get yeah. a job. I was so you resisted that. Exactly. And and stay with it. Stay My with mother it. was on me like, yo, you gotta go get a job, nigga. Something that punch a clock. Hair is not <laughs> it. Like you're bugging. Like, nigga, you gotta get into the real world. I was like, no. Right. And then she was like, she knew people with shops. She wanted me to go in there. They was like, they'll hire you to sweep. I was like, sweep? I'm not fucking sweep. I'm cutting hair. I'm trying to make You was how old at this point? I was in I was in seventh grade. Seventh grade at that word, point. Okay. Word. Seventh grade, eighth grade, still the same shit. So at I that mean, time, you already had visions of an entrepreneur. Yeah, I was like, I want a shop. And, right. I, and I always wanted to call that shit the chop shop, yo. Okay. Straight up. My mom, I was cutting hair in the apartment. Mm -hmm. And she, my mother was like, hair was getting all over the place. Right. She's like, this shit gotta go. And I started cutting hair in my man basement, my man Dave Sampson, Dawood. Right. And I was paying him to cut in his basement. Okay. That's the crazy shit. Okay. He was like, yo, T's, come cut my basement, maybe we can get it right. popping. Right. And I was just like, yo, and my mother would always say, you gotta go get a job, you gotta go get a job. Something to punch a clock. I worked at UPS, my man Dave Sampson got me a job there. Right. I hated that shit. And I was just like, yo, I can't work for them. I was working at the shop and UPS. Right. I was getting like three hundred dollars a week from UPS, yo. Wow. Working five hours, that shit felt like slave, yo. <laughs> I was in the shop, getting way more money. Right. I was like, fuck that. Right. I wasn't getting no benefits at UPS. I was getting more money at the shop. My mother seen that shit, but like she ain't had the. Your mother was at BLS at this time? At BLS, yes. Okay. HBO, BLS. Okay. She really literally didn't have to do nothing for me from when I was in like eighth grade. Nigga, like she used to. You were self sufficient. I was, I was good. I was good. Okay. Was buying clothes, all that shit. Wow. She had to do nothing. Wow. I mean, parenthood never ends. You know, I still got to hit my mom. Tap like, in a little bit every now and then. I got you. Let me get a G right here. I'll be back in like two days. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that's, she's a, she's my loan shark. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> but she literally, like, she left her corporate world to open a shop. And she was like, yo. Because of what you because did. Because of what I was doing. And, like, she used to get her hair done. Right. Women come to the crib, do her hair. They be in there, like, fucking 12 hours doing her hair, braiding her shit. Right. And she paying for that shit. Right. Micro braids, all that shit. I was like, I guess she saw the light. I was doing hair. Right. She was like, yo, let's open the shop. And I was like, bullshit, man. She was like, yo, I got the spot. Right. Opened up right on T-Neck Road, Lloyd's. It was the old barbershop I used to work at. Mm -hmm. She got that shit. And we did the Jacob G. Abbott's event. And after that, it was the sky's the limit, yo. We've been wow. doing it ever since. And she tell hey, me your, your mom's went from telling you to, it to get a shit. corporate job. Yeah. Because we'll start by sweeping the floors in the, in yep. the barber shops to actually opening the shop with you. Yep. And she got three shops. Because okay. this, is, this is her shit, too. Right. This is, you know what I'm saying? Right. She don't fuck with it, but it's still part of the it's still, part of No, the you started with this shit, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. My grandmother bought me my first pair of clippers 
and it's been on ever since, yo. Wow. After my grandfather's clippers, I fucked my shit up with. <laughs> <laughs> Craziest story you ever heard in a barbershop? Oh man, it's too many. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, oh my gosh. The shop is crazy. I done seen niggas get fucked up in here. Right, fighting. I done filmed a lot of shit. <laughs> can't, can't. I got a movie and shit in my, right. in my you got, phone, B. You got a documentary in stories, your phone. Stories, oh, stories, B. I done, yo, the craziest shit. This lady came in here one night. <clears throat> she came in here storming. It was like 10 o'clock at night, yo. I had a customer in the chair. Aqua's cutting right here. Larry was down there. This lady came in. Mm -hmm. Her son comes in behind her. He got a t-shirt on, ripped, a pair of boxes, and one sock. Okay. She made this thing in the chair. And said, Somebody cut his hair off because he don't want to do his <laughs> chores. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Right? Right. A mother bringing her son in here like, it was it was fucked up. Like, damn, that's messed up. Why you gonna do that shit? Right. And we talked to Shorty, you know what I'm saying? But it was like, damn, why you gonna do that shit to your son, yo? So he she was using cutting his hair off as a punishment. As a punishment. For him but then like the shorts. way like nigga don't get dressed, you going in the shop like this. Mm -hmm. Don't even put the other sock right. on. Just snatched him up. Like how you gonna do that shit? Let's dude? go. Like it was like <laughs> that's some crazy shit. <laughs> I done seen niggas get married, seen niggas get divorced, I done... You heard about, you, you cut their hair because of their wedding. I, I cut niggas for weddings, I cut niggas for their divorce. For their divorce. I done seen niggas get married, niggas is annulments a month later. <laughs> I done right. seen... I done seen it all, man. Right. The Barbershop is, is a movie. It's a movie. I was gonna say that. It's, it's like a, a movie. movie. Relationships, and movie. friends, all types of shit. And it's a privacy, you know? Privacy policy. <laughs> <laughs> if a uh, seventeen-year-old kid comes to you, Mr. Martinez, I want to, I want to become a barber. What do you tell him? What's your story? What's your guidance for him? Like, do you, do, do you cut hair? Right. You got a passion. Like, you gotta want to do it, man. Show right. me what you got. Right. Who you got to cut? Right. So. From that point, from the business side of things, what do you tell them? What's the starting point? Get the get the education. I started I started just cutting, so I didn't do the education shit. Mm -hmm. I went to three schools, y'all. Okay. I went to school in California, mm -hmm. a barber school, which was five dollars. Before you had the shop. Before I had the shop. Okay. When my my um, when I was in high school in California, I went to a barber school. It was five dollars downtown LA. But the travel was just too crazy, so I couldn't do it. Came back home, went to Parisian, which was thirteen hundred dollars, no, thirteen thousand dollars. Okay, thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. Five dollars to thirteen thousand dollars. Then I dropped out of that shit because right. I had my kid, so I was like, I gotta, you know, help with the kid. Right. Then I went to Empire. Mm -hmm. Where's Empire? That I know was Parisians Roo. is in Hackensack. Yeah, Parisians Hackensack. is in Hackensack. Empire was on Route 4. And I just did that in 2013. I graduated from that shit. Wow. And got my license. Okay. So I was cutting on some illegal. You didn't have your license. I was on the block. Right. But right. I was I was grandfathered in because uh, it's like, yo, at your own risk, yo. I was cutting people I was cutting from high school. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they've been with me forever. Okay. So they understood. Yeah, but I, I wanted to, I wanted to go to school and get that education. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And nobody told me when I was in high school mm -hmm. that I could have went to cosmetology school. That's an option for kids that don't know. You can do cosmetology half a day. Okay. Nobody told me that. And I could have got my license in school. So elaborate on that. Like you can do cosmetology yes. cosmetology school while you're in high while school. While you're in high school, yes. That's it. Like half day, it. half a day. So you would go to high school. You would go to high school in the morning, and then you would get bus to, say, like Teterboro. Bergen Tech had that. Bergen okay. Tech was if you went to Bergen Tech, you could do everything right there. Trade school. Yeah, but we had to go off the ground. So from Teaneck, you could get bus to Teterboro, and get your license. And now Empire was also doing that. Wow. Right before the pandemic hit. Okay. 
So the first step you would tell them is make sure you get the education, yes. get your license. And do it while you're in high school. Right. Opposed to waiting. Because they're not going to tell you that you can do that, but you right. can actually ask about it and they will, that's that's an option. So what do you, you get credits for that? You get credits. You could actually get your license. You could get your license before you graduate high school. Your, your barbership yes. license? Yes, your cosmetology okay. or the barber. What's the difference between the two? Now, the barbering is, is not as much education as the cosmetology, okay. and, it's, and it's more hours. Um, I did the whole cosmetology course. I think the barbering was, damn, I don't even know what it was. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what it was. But I just know the cosmetology is <coughs> damn near a full damn year. Right. In the barber shop, is yeah, the barber is different. It's, it's, it's like like six months. They got them in New York, but New York license is not really. They don't acknowledge it over here. Okay, New Jersey has more hours, so New Jersey is acknowledged more, and I think California has. Um, I think it's beauty culture. So okay. that's a whole different, different animal of the cosmetology. Non transferable, like you can't yeah, bring that here. Yeah. Some to states Jersey. can bring it, right? Like Jersey could go to New York, but I think New York can't come to Jersey, okay? Something like that, yeah. Okay. So, you got one, two, three, five cheers? We got, we got four cheers, four and cheers, a, and a maybe, okay? Yeah, four cheers and a maybe, somebody in training in the back, okay? Okay, so you always have four, you brew the four. Yeah. No, it was, it was, we actually had more. Some people left, you know, they graduated. Right. <laughs> and got their own shit, which I'm right. proud of. Right. Um, but it was actually like seven of us in here one time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My wife was even doing hair. She, your wife was uh, cutting or doing No, something? she was doing like um, natural hair care. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. So, are you looking to expand or like, what's your thoughts about um, where you're at and where you want to go? The next, if, if anything I do, I want to own. I don't want to pay nobody no rent no more. That, that's another thing I would tell people from the giddy up. Yo, don't rent. Right. Own. Right. Because you, you still, I own the business, but I don't own the building. Right. So that's the, that's the best advice. You don't want to pay nobody no rent. Like I've been here this long, this dude been getting a lot of money. 20, you get 19 years you know, of rent. You know what I'm saying? And our last, that's the funny thing. Our last landlord that owned this building, mm -hmm. my mother told him, because we had three stores occupied right. on this block. My store, my uncle's clothing store, and my mother's shop. Okay. She told the landlord, if you ever think about selling, let us know, because we got three businesses, we might as well buy the building. Right. He was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna sell, but yeah, if ever, him and his, his father passed away, him and his sister were going through the dispute, who gets what, coming here, don't pay him rent, pay me rent. I'm like, um, and sold the building, y'all. Mm. Didn't tell you. Didn't tell us. Didn't tell us. Great landlord until that point. Right. Was in the building department. He said, I didn't even think I was going to sell. I saw the people in the building department, they just made me off. I couldn't refuse. Wow. I said, damn, yo. So now that's the same landlord you have now, the no. new one? The new the new landlord is the same dude that bought the building. I bought the building from and, you. And um, as soon as he bought the building, I was paying 900 he went up to 1800 yo. Wow, doubled it. Huh? Doubled it. Mm. Doubled it. Fought him in court, I got him down, you know what I'm saying? But still, no, if you don't own, you, you don't control it. You at the, you at the mercy of the landlord, yo. Right. You don't control nothing. Right. So own is the best bet. So if you had an opportunity to buy a building, yes, you would relocate. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's one of the things you know we would we would look into from 1440s perspective to see how we can help you make that transition, right? Right? Because we do real estate on our side. So if we can figure out how to loop you into a building where you buy it, you own it. I think that would be a strategic move for you because now you're owning the the business right. and the building paying down the debt and ultimately that can trickle down to your, your children right right now with the building you're renting it so there's nothing to leave there's nothing to leave Clippers. that's right <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's right so it gotta be a better way that's right definitely okay all right cool so the next step for you would be owning a building anything else strategically like what how do you own your business now is it sole proprietorship sole proprietorship sole proprietorship i mother got the llc i kept it sole proprietorship because okay. I registered, that's the funny shit, I registered the business mm -hmm. name before I even opened the business. Like, 
once I, I knew I wanted to do the chop shop, like right. I was like, let me go register this name. Okay. <clears throat> Just in case, like when I was doing a lot of on location work and I had to do invoices, like if I go out to do, I'm cutting entertainment, you right. know what I'm saying? It was like, who we gonna pay? I was like, yo, pay the chop shop. Right. So back when I was, um, it was like 1998, I registered before mm -hmm. I even thought about opening anything. Mm -hmm. I was like, let me get this name down. So I just been from there on. So proprietorship, did the sole proprietorship. Okay. Because it was just me then. Right. So when I opened the shop, it was just like, yo, this some we'll just keep this shit going. Right. Okay. And then you have any uh like you did all this with your cash or did any yeah. business credit? I was just working, paying, getting shit piece by piece. Me and my aunt <clears throat> started this barbershop, this old barbershop down the block. And um dude like he was going out of business, so we went there and we bought the chairs from him. Smart. Yeah. And we just had that shit on stash. Right. And once it was time to open up. Right. Had everything ready. I was getting them little stations piece by piece. Okay. I love this, man. Good luck, man. Yeah. Two, two shops. Yeah. It's all so very, very crafty. Yeah, and convenient. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's do a, um, a SWOT analysis. Okay. So let's talk about your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities, and your threats. What would you consider the business strength to be? What is the strength of the chop shop? Um, me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Nah, but the, the barbers, you know what I'm saying? The customers is the start, is the strength of the chop shop. Because without the okay. customers, there's no, right? There's nothing, yo. So would you say how frequent do you get new customers into your business? Every day, somebody new walks in. Every day. Every day. Wow. Even if they walk in here by mistake. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. There's two barber shops on the block. There's one, um, you know, they cater to the um, Jewish community. Okay. And we cater to everybody. Right. So. We get somebody new here every day, yo. That's crazy. And then for the most part, you retain the customers you get. Yeah. So you're constantly growing the business with new customers. Right. You got Google, you know, people hit us up. Oh, I found you on Google, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's crazy because I, when I, it's hard to find people that have the passion to cut. You don't find that no more. Right. People just do it. They just do it. Like when I was in here in the school, mm -hmm. there was kids there just to please their parents. Like they was just, I gotta do something because my mom wants me to do something. Like, right. But do you like doing hair? Right. I don't wanna do hair. Right. I'm like, and you don't want nobody like that in your business. You want somebody that has a passion right. for doing this work. Yeah, I, I um, run a basketball program, as you know. I coached your daughter for a little while, but I always ask people, like, you wanna coach? And if they ever come back to me and say, well, how much do you pay? That's not the person I yeah. usually interact with because you yeah. got to, stuff like that, you got to be able to just do it. And then the pay will come right. down the road, right? Like some people do it, earn it for the money are typically the ones that aren't good for the kids or aren't good for the business because if the money get funny, they out. They out. So it's all about getting the, the right people on the bus, so when the when the ride get a little bumpy, they're not looking mm -hmm. to jump off the mm -hmm. bus. They're going to strap in with you and, and ride it out. That, that, yo, crazy shit, though. I done had the lights go out here. Right. The barbers stuck around like, yo, T's be rocking with you. Yo. Right. <laughs> it's the right people on the bus. <laughs> hit us up when you hit us up when That's back happened on, the right people on the bus. And, yo, we be going around the corner to cut at my mother's shop. Go right. with me. Right. One, one, one uh, month, I had a, um, a bill for $400. Right. Paid the shit. This is an electric, yeah. electric gas bill? They can't get in the basement because mm -hmm. my uncle's closed. Mm -hmm. So that's the way to get in the basement. Okay. The next month I got a bill for $4,000. They said, we've been estimating your bill for some years now. I said, what? <laughs> I said, I don't know what y'all gonna do. Right. I said, yeah, I can't, I can't do nothing. They right. shut that shit off, yo. So they went from 400 to 4,000. To 4,000 and expected you to just. Yeah, it's expected me to pay, pay it out like right. I was like, nah, it ain't happening like that. Right. But, and, and my barber said, yo, teach me help. Nah, nah, I got it, I got it. We gonna take care of this, B. Take care of the shit. The barbers was right there, yo. Hit us up when you open, man. Right. So the strength is your squad? Yeah. The, the squad customers? And the squad. And your squad. You gotta have a team, yo. Your weakness, what would you consider to be a weakness? Not having more of me. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me more about that. What does that look like? As an entrepreneur, as, that's our biggest struggle, right? Is trying to 
the key is to reproduce ourselves. Right. Right. So you have somebody else who you can trust to shop with. You can go on vacation and I could put your phone, shop with, phone the, with, the, with the guys. That, that's no problem. But I just want. I just need more. If I had two of me, mm -hmm. I'd be. It'd be. What do you do differently that you would say your other barbers don't bring? Everybody do their own thing, man. That's how. That's what. That's. It's just. I just need more of me. What is me? Like when I. I'm going to make you drill into that. Like, <laughs> what is me? What does T's do that you wouldn't. Doing this, B. I got the right. path. I got a passion, yo. Right. I just. I don't lose the passion. Right. But you, you said these guys, they. And they, they got know, passion, they, but they, got, passion other, they got other things to do. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They got other things to do. I just have a passion for. For cutting, yo. So you would need someone else who has that same, that same passion as you. Yeah, there's, that's there's, just there's, in it. There's none, right. and they all have their own shit. Right. So, right. You know what I'm saying? So with the weakness, that's an important thing that you have to figure out. Maybe you can teach somebody that skill that you have. Passion, you can't teach that. You can't. You can't, you can't teach, teach passion, it. but maybe understanding what it is you're missing. If Tees is not here, if Tees had to walk out the door today, or if Tees couldn't show up tomorrow. What well, ain't is nobody gonna take care of your shit like you? I believe you know that. I'm saying ten percent. That's just that's just what it is. Right. Um. No, and nobody got the passion, you know. You right. can't find that shit. Right. Nobody. I. I don't know. So you are you saying more of like the the business side of things, passion, or the kind of hair? I mean, obviously they have a passion. They've been with you. They stuck with you. The lights went out. You guys left together. You came back together. So the passion, they absolutely have even to even my niggas that have shops now, they can't find nobody that got. Yo, it's hard to find your teeth. It's hard to find. I walk by your teeth. Where the barbers? I'm like, nigga. <laughs> 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 if you find you know where we know. at, we standing where we at, yo. Right. You can't find nobody. Like people had to. It's a, it's a hobby. That's the shit. You gotta mm -hmm. love. You gotta love it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm a people person. I like talking, I like listening, and I like cutting fucking hair. And it's like, you're not gonna find that nowhere, B. Right. You're not gonna. I have yet to find somebody. I thought my daughter was gonna cut hair. Okay. But, nah, she was like, oh no. She, she, she cut little dummies and shit like that, <laughs> mannequins, but. Not her passion. Yeah, it's not her passion. It's not her passion. So, it's what about your, your son? Does he wanna do it no. at all? No, no. The kids grew up in the shop, so they like it. You gotta get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, That's how it was my they, dad. You know, the saying, you, you know what I'm saying? You was right. here all the time. Right. So, and I don't blame them. Right. This was the fun spot. They come here, get cuts, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, get, and get some money. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. But it's just hard to find somebody with the passion. Be so the weakness is not having someone with your passion. Yeah. That's it's a, not having. That's yeah, it's a not weakness having, for you right now. Okay, so we'll drill into that. We'll spend some time on that next time we touch down, but that's going to be important for you because how you keep the Chop Shop legacy growing and going is going to be through. And it's all this new else. shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, people got suites and they doing, like, I got the mobile shit right now. Right. The mobile barbershop. I take that out to do it to my clients. Mm -hmm. um, I did a wedding party the other day. Like, it, niggas are getting creative with it. Like, you don't even have to be in the shop. Right. It's just the shop environment that people like coming to. It's unmatched. Like, I go to people and cut their hair, but when they come to the shop, they're like, damn, I miss that shit. Like, right. you, it's, it's a it's a getaway. It's a whole man. vibe, You know man. what I'm saying? Like, right. nigga, we got the bag in the middle right. of the room. We got the right. pull-up bar. We got weights. Like, right. It's a fucking getaway, B. Like, right. I done slept nights in this month. Right. Last night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Definitely. Like, it is what it is, man. Right. Like, people, it's just the, it's the, it's the members only shit. Okay. What's your opportunity for growth or anything? Like, what's an opportunity? Well, it's always that you opportunity. Say? Okay. Um, especially meeting new clients and networking. Right. It's, 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 it's like the, it's like a fucking golf club when you sit down. Right. Like, we not playing golf. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. But it's networking. It's always opportunity. People mm -hmm. make deals here. Right. People meet people. Um, I don't see people get jobs corporate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For you specifically, what's an opportunity for growth for you? Um, just 
more more just the opportunity for me right now I'm working on getting in the union okay in the entertainment union so um putting my hours in because that's where I'll be able to to relax more so what does that look like when you get in the union, the union, the entertainment union, what does that do for you? That's what does that like, do for the business? And and it's, it's promoting. Where I could pass my clients that I'm doing now onto my barbers. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and and get them where I'm at. So the chop shop would be a part of the union and then it would grow that way? Or is it, it would a franchise? It, it, would, no, it would be me, but, but it would be, I'm sort of like right now a, a broker. Okay. Where I'm getting barbers out to, oh, I'm not here right now, but I could Refer send you, you such and such. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And that's an opportunity for them to get money. Okay. If I can't do something, I'm passing it along, just like my people do in California. Okay. See, so I can't get to New York. Can you go do this client for me? Gotcha. Yeah, I could do this client. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Somebody hit me up the other day, yo, Tees, you ever do an invoice? I got a client, up. yeah, this what you do. Da -da 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 -da. Matter of fact, let me send you this program. Mm -hmm. I'll do it on this app. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Almost like a consultant. Yeah. Okay. Alright. And then the last thing is your threat. What is a threat to your business? What threatens your business? That's externally and internally. Is there a threat within your walls that... The threat is not only <laughs> being at the mercy of the land. Or right. Um, the threat is of the business competition right. coming. Um, but as long as we maintain and do what we're doing, we mm -hmm. stay we got the threat shield, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's right. Building the threat you know, shield. We got the squad, you know That's what right. I'm saying? My my my, my home girl, Al, she worked at both shops. She's back and forth. She go with my mother's mm -hmm. doing hair. She come over here when she wanna be more relaxed. Right. Or when we got clients, you know what I'm saying? If my mother needs us to come over there and cut somebody, we going over there. Mm -hmm. Um but The, the, the only threat is not doing what we're supposed to do. Right. As long as we stay on stay on point, we good, man. Okay. All right, it's dope. And being consistent. Right. So, right. With the community. Mm hmm What's it like being in Teaneck as far as your barbershop? What's some of the experiences you have that you would tell others that may want to open a business in to watch out for? Um... Well, watch out for the haters. <laughs> they always gonna have haters, right? Um, but other than that, I don't know, man. I just gotta keep your shit tight. Mm -hmm. Stay up to code on everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been here. It's like we grandfathered in, so we could be straight, man. Right. Anything else you want to leave the people with before we tap out? Um, yo, support black businesses, bro. <laughs> That's all. all right. Support my people. Yes, sir. So, again, this is our first episode tapping in with Martise at the Chop Shop Barbershop. We are both just kids from Teaneck, Teaneck born and raised. So, um, this segment will be about individuals, again, ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I, as a young dude, a little younger than Tease. But just watched him, you know, come through the rings, walk working in other barbershops to now have his own barbershop. Super proud of you, my guy. Good luck, man. Super proud of you, super Appreciate proud of you. you man. And, um, you know, as 1440 does it, we're going to evaluate some of the tape, come back at Tease and say, all right, these are some of the things we may see as some of your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, your threats that you said. Let's help him get better and help each other support each other's business, help him grow his business. And help him get into that union like he wants to is kind of what we as a people have to start doing. It's just kind of tapping in, promoting each other's business, and supporting each other's business. So, this is Bernard Pearson tapping out. My guy, appreciate you all day. And, uh, you know, leave you all with that. Thank you. <laughs>